It's not every day I get to do a Star Wars video considering I mainly focus on Dragon Ball for this channel, but ever since I started going down the Akira Toriyama rabbit hole following his unfortunate passing, I stumbled across many things that I think probably not everybody knows about. So I decided to make this video today to go over it. One of those things that I found very interesting was that he got his start in manga with a Star Wars parody. Now to call it a Star Wars parody is what many people call it, and I guess it could be inspired by Star Wars. There is a lot of Star Wars designs and it seems to be taking place on a Star Wars inspired Tatooine-ish planet. That's not called Tatooine, but you pretty much know it's Tatooine. And there's also some other sketches that I wanted to go over. So, before we get into the actual parody itself, I just want to prove to you how much of a Star Wars fan Akira Toriyama was. Here is his sketch that he did for the Phantom Menace release of Young Anakin with a droid. And the translation of the text here says, Woo, it feels like forever, but finally, Star Wars is back. To say nothing of the story, the atmosphere of the world and the designs are wonderful. I am one of those who have been bitten by the bug and I am bursting with excitement. It's been a long wait for the fourth movie. I'm really excited. Personally, I don't have much interest in the people in this series, so Darth Vader appearing as a child doesn't do much for me. I'm only looking forward to Ewan McGregor. But watching the trailer, the mecha, robots, aliens and such all have really great designs. And the SFX also look considerably impressive. It's going to be really fantastic. I can't wait. And that was what Akira Toriyama had to say leading up to the premiere of Phantom Menace. And if you're a Star Wars fan, you gotta know a lot of people were excited leading up to the premiere of The Phantom Menace. Uh, that's just what Akira Toriyama had to say about the Star Wars excitement he had going on leading up to Phantom Menace. So I always knew that he was a big Star Wars fan and then doing my research I discovered the mysterious Rain Jack Star Wars parody. So it is a parody to an extent it uses many Star Wars designs. So we're just going to go ahead and get into the plot breakdown. We have a news broadcast starting the series out, or the one shot out, with a devil looking character who's not a devil necessarily, he's called the Thunder God. And he's predicting it's going to rain today. Well on this island there is kind of a hot atmosphere for the most part, so people are excited for some rain. So. The story starts out with a Jawa-looking inspired character happening upon this horrific scene of a pig-like character strapped to a, a pole, I guess you could say. And the police are called to investigate the scene. Now, whenever the police investigate the scene, they're really at a loss for words, and they notice some beans are missing. Well... Things take a turn for the worst when they hear this isn't the only incident of things going missing. They go to another house and it looks like some cola was stolen. As well as some bubble gum. Whenever the police hear about this, the shorter policeman, who is only referred to as the inspector from what I can tell here, he says, my god, and so the taller one says, inspector, have you cracked the case? And the shorter one says, all this talk's making me hungry, let's go grab a bite. And they take off on a speeder, which is just very reminiscent of a design you would see in Star Wars. And along the way, he kind of sees a Leia-inspired character. And then we get our Luke-inspired looking character, and he looks just like Luke Skywalker. He says, sorry to bother you, but would you be interested in a parasol? And the inspector says, you don't, be, you don't seem to be carrying anything of the sort. And he, and the Luke character pretty much just pulls out a lightsaber and as he ignites it, it becomes an umbrella. And so the other inspector, the taller one, says he doesn't need junk like that. So they go ahead and go home and take a rest for the night. And the next day, whenever they wake up, the taller inspector is getting ready and the shorter inspector is on his way out the door. The taller inspector is like, hey, what's going on here? Why are you leaving? He's like, I have to go to a baseball game, sir. It's bright and sunny out today. And of course the tall inspector is like, that's weird. It was supposed to rain today. The Thunder God said so. So the shorter inspector goes off and the taller inspector grabs him and pulls him by the ear to come with him. And what ends up happening is an R2-D2 character pretty much talks to his C-3PO partner character and says that he's pretty sure he solved the case, but to be sure they need to bring all the stolen items to them. 
and they go ahead and take a roundup or an inventory of everything and the taller inspector says what's going on here and so the c-3po character basically says we need to verify some things so we need you to put this headset on and shake up this cola bottle and we also need you to grab the beans so what ends up happening is the shaken cola bottle that he straps to his back basically launches him off like a rocket launcher and he goes up into the heavens where the thunder god is and the c-3po character is communicating with him through the speaker or the headset that he gave him and they're basically getting to the bottom of it he's like go up there check things out see how things are looking and he sees that the thunder god is passed out so somebody's after the thunder god so the tall inspector says you were right on the money i found a can of cola and beans here the ogre's out cold and from the looks of things he's not getting up anytime soon and then the c-3po character says maybe it's due to the beans you likely remember the set sabun festival where demons are chased off with beans and the thunder god is an ogre just a few beans would send him off let alone a whole kilograms worth thrown all at once despite his might he quickly lost consciousness maybe he didn't even see the attacker only question is why was he chosen as a target so now that they are looking through for the culprit now the question is who could it be and then that's when the c3po character says it's somebody who wouldn't want to train today and the taller inspector says i know who you are talking about oh and another thing i forgot to mention is whenever the tall inspector is leaving the heavens what he needed to bring the bubble gum for was so that he could float down to the earth just with a little bubble gum bubble that actually blew up to be big enough to basically let him float down so when the tall inspector gets back to the rest of the cops they're basically talking amongst themselves trying to get to the conclusion quickly because as the shorter inspector notes the manga's coming to an end we don't have any more pages left and then he comes up with the idea that the culprit has to be the parasol seller because he was the only one with a good motive for it to not rain today that way people will buy his parasols to shield themselves from the heat so the taller inspector goes and looks for him and he comes by a sand person looking character a tuscan raider inspired character if you will and he says have you seen a parasol seller come through here and the tuscan raider says i don't recall but i did just pass a person chewing bubble gum does that help and then the tall inspector says that's the person i saw yesterday thinking it's going to be the parasol seller and then the Tuscan Raider says, Are you joking? It was a short, balding man. He looked a lot like your inspector, even. That's when things get interesting. The taller inspector runs off saying, That scruffy scoundrel, he took out the Thunder God all so he could go play some baseball today. And then, as he approaches the short inspector, the short inspector says, Oh, you're back. So did you catch the perp? And so you think the story's ended there, but there's just one more panel of the Little loot character taking off the Tuscan Raider mask. That's right, it was him the whole time, sticking his tongue out. And so the story ends there. It's a little open-ended. You're like, who did it? Who was the real person who took out the Thunder God? It was obviously the Luke-inspired character. Anyway, this was, I think, the second story by Toriyama whenever he was trying to break into the manga scene. And the editor, Torishima, said, Toriyama, we cannot do anything with this because you're just using Star Wars characters. We gotta do something else. And basically, he pretty much believed in Toriyama and the talent that he was giving him, but he wanted him to hone his skills and come up with something a bit more original in the future. Anyways, they would end up working together on Dragon Ball, and of course, as we would note in the West, Dragon Ball Z, and the rest is history. Anyways, guys, I wanted to share that interesting story because there's actually not a lot of people that know that Akira Toriyama did a Star Wars story. Of course, I'm going to go deeper into the Toriyama library and hopefully provide more videos like this over the coming weeks and months. Going into the background of Toriyama, other things that he's done that I found interesting that I think are video worthy. And of course, could make for some nice videos in between this break of Dragon Ball Super. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a comment letting me know and like the video. And don't forget to subscribe, and it really does help out the channel. I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace off.